You'd think it'd be straightforward and easy, but there are a surprisingly large number of challenges when implementing accurate aiming in your game. In this video, we're gonna take a look at three different ways to solve the aiming problem. One is widely used throughout the game dev industry, shooting a raycast from your camera and just making the bullet go wherever that hit. A second one that's gaining more popularity is you actually shoot a bullet from the gun. That's what we've been doing so far and you've already seen the challenges in the series. The third one is a slight hybrid between the two where you would aim the gun directly at something that the ray cast from the camera hit, then shoot from the gun to that location. Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy. Here to help you. Who, me? Yes, you. Make your game dev dreams become reality by helping you aim your gun. Or maybe make your bullets go where you're aiming. Something like that, it's complicated. Let's start with what are the pros and cons of using each of these methods. And then later on, we'll actually implement two of them. The most common one that we see in all kinds of games is you shoot a raycast straight out of the camera, the center of the screen, and wherever that hits, we kind of fake the bullet trail going to that location. You can just play the trail coming out of the gun, and as long as your gun's pointed in the general direction of wherever that is, there's no problem. It still looks like it's shooting in the right direction. The bullet trails play so quickly that even if that's not perfectly straight, it's really hard to tell. You can easily tell if a game is doing this by having your gun be close to a wall and having your reticle off to the side a little bit where it'd shoot through like a corner or something like that. And you'll actually see the bullet trail go through the corner of the wall and hit something in the background. This happens because we're raycasting from the camera and then playing a representation of the bullet from a totally different location. So you can see this potential for when the gun shoots for it to clip through something that it wouldn't hit from the camera's location because there's a different perspective between the two. This problem is exacerbated on a third person controller because the camera is significantly farther away and possibly significantly different angle than the gun. For first person shooters, really the only problem here is visual artifacts. Sometimes you can shoot through walls. For third person shooters, a new challenge comes out of here and that's that your camera is farther away from the player and the first person shooter is all kind of like scrunched in together. A third person shooter, because the camera's back here and the player's forward, what happens if something comes between the camera and the player? You shouldn't shoot backwards and shoot it, that'd be really weird. So there's a little bit more complexity in there that you have to take a look at. We are going to implement this one in the third person shooter, which we can of course see those issues, and we'll also talk about how we can avoid shooting something that comes between the camera and the gun, so that way we're only shooting stuff in front of the player. The next most common way that we shoot is actually just shooting a bullet straight out of the barrel of a gun. This is the most realistic feel because you're gonna actually shoot a raycast or an actual bullet out of the barrel of the gun and it's gonna hit whatever you're gonna hit. The biggest challenge here is how do you represent to the player you're gonna shoot here. You've noticed so far in the gun series that there's kind of a little sway on the model and the bullets go wherever the gun's aiming. So because the model sways a little bit, the gun sways a little bit. So if we wanted to represent where the player was gonna shoot, the crosshair would like be moving all the time, which is really weird and you don't really see that in games. Most commonly what I see is games that use this just don't give you a crosshair and just totally skip the problem. Or they do it where they'll show you the reticle only when you enter like the aiming state and then you'll either be looking down iron sights or you'll like pull the camera up, pull the camera in, and the reticle will be much more close to the center of the screen because they've entered that aiming state and probably the sway of the model goes away as well. But we'll talk more about this after we do the implementation in the demo. The third and least common of these is if you shoot a raycast out of the camera, just like the first one, you point the gun to wherever that hit point is, then you launch a bullet or do the hit scan from the gun itself. Now you get the benefit of you get the realistic impacts of whatever is going to happen. So you don't get those weird visual artifacts. Now we we're talking about in the first method, and you get the benefits of realistic bullets that we get in the second one. This sounds like it should be like the holy grail of these, but it really introduces a lot of weirdness. The gun kind of twitches around as you look around because it's aiming at different points that are maybe different depths. And if we imagine that we're playing a game and we have realistic bullet physics, shooting actual bullets, and I want to shoot somebody very far away, it's really challenging to properly lead them if I'm trying to aim at them, but I need to project their position forward in my aim by, you know, a second or something like that. So my bullet could take time to get there, but I can't aim in a straight line in front of them because maybe there's mountains or something that's going to mess with my gun aim. I think that's why this one's not used very frequently. None of these are totally inviolable solutions. Each one 
has its own pros and cons, and you'd want to think about how do you want your game to feel, you choose one of these implementations. You can work around a lot of the cons of each of these methods that would introduce some compromise between visual quality and realism. So it's important to consider which of these is the most important for your game and make adjustments accordingly. Remember that the full project is always on GitHub. You can go to github.com slash llama academy, check out the full project, see if maybe if you're following along and you type something wrong and you're getting a weird error, compare your implementation to what's there. You can also just download the project and play with it. The first thing we'll do is create a new enum called shoot type and give it two options. One is from camera and one is from gun. We're only gonna implement those two types today. Then in our shoot config scriptable object, we'll add a public shoot type, shoot type, and set it to be from gun by default because that's how all of our code works so far. We open up the gun scriptable object. Unfortunately, now we need to know about the camera. So we'll add a private camera, active camera, and whenever we're spawning in our gun, we'll ask for a camera and set it to be null by default. That way, again, we don't have to make any changes to any existing code. We'll set the active camera to be that camera that was passed in. And we'll also add a public void update camera, which would accept a new camera to override our currently active camera. In case you switch cameras in the middle of the game, we would want the ability for the gun system to be able to handle that properly. Then in our try to shoot, we need to consider the shoot direction. Instead of only coming from the shoot system forward, we'll now say vector three shoot direction set to be zero by default. Check if the shoot config type is from gun and we'll set that equal to the shoot system forward so we get the same behavior as before. In the else case, meaning it's from the camera, we're going to shoot direction equals active camera transform forward plus active camera dot transform dot transform direction, the spread amount. So we're still going to apply some recoil to the gun exactly as we were doing before based on that spread amount doing the transform direction. But we also want to apply that spread to the actual shooting, which is coming from the camera now or coming from the camera in that case. So we've updated the spread amount and the direction, which will make it where hitscan works out of the box, almost. The only thing is we need to change where it's raycasting from to no longer be only from the shoot system position, but it could be from there or it could be from somewhere else. So we're gonna replace that with get raycast origin. Now let's define that public vector three raycast origin, and I'll tell you why public in just a little bit. And in here, we'll do a vector three origin equals shoot system dot transform dot position. And if the shoot config dot shoot type equals the shoot type of from camera, then we need to do something a little bit different. We'll return the active camera dot transform dot position plus the active camera transform forward times the distance between the active camera and the shoot system. What this is going to do is effectively project our start position forward by however far in front of the camera that shooting system is. And if we don't hit this if, we'll just return the origin. This prevents something coming between the camera and the gun and having the gun shoot backwards. I tried to play with some vector math to project the camera forward and couldn't come up with a better solution than this. So if you know a better solution, go ahead and leave a comment letting me know. In do projectile shoot, we also need to do something when we're going to shoot from the camera. Before we actually shoot the bullet, we'll check if shoot config dot shoot type is shoot type from camera and a physics dot raycast from the origin in the shoot direction, passing out the rate cast hit with a float max value on the shoot config hit mask, hit something. If it does, what we're gonna do is get the direction to that hit point with vector three direction to hit equals hit point minus shoot system transform position dot normalized and then set the model transform forward to the direction to the hit. We'll also set the shoot direction to be this direction. This way we're ensuring that the gun is looking at whatever the camera deems to be within the spray range. Then we'll shoot out the bullet from the barrel of the gun. Otherwise, we're not aiming at the right place with the gun and it's not gonna be directly where that reticle shows that the bullet should go. We're also gonna need to define public vector three, get gun forward and return the model transform forward. We're just preventing other scripts from having to know about the model. And we'll talk about why we need that in just a little bit. That should be all we need to do in here. So let's go to player gun selector and start passing in the camera because we need to do that on spawn now. We'll add a public camera camera. And whenever we spawn the gun, we'll just provide the camera. That's the only change we're making here. We hop back to the Unity editor. We'll drag our main camera to the player gun selector. And we'll drag our basic not accurate crosshair to the crosshair and rename it because it should be accurate now. If we select our M4 shoot config, we'll change the shoot type to from camera. And let's just see how it goes after we set the spread to zero. In the scene view, we can see some gizmos that I set up in an editor. They'll show us the forward direction based on the camera and where it's actually going to start the raycast from and also where it should hit. Looks like it's working pretty well. Let's try it with shooting real bullets. Perfect. 
There's a subtle difference that was a little bit hard to see, but on this one we can tell that the gun is aiming at that point, and the last time it actually wasn't, it's just the bullet went off to the side a little bit. Now one problem here is if we're not in the aiming mode where the player is actually looking where we're trying to shoot, we can get some really ridiculous results. That's some player input controls that we'd have to work on to make it work a little bit better. The from camera looks like it's working perfectly, but what about if we want to shoot from the gun? So we can see that still doesn't work quite right because the crosshair is still stuck in the middle of the screen. So this is the same problem that we were having earlier where our crosshair doesn't reflect what's happening with the gun. Let's see what we can do to adjust that. We open up the player action. I don't know if this is the best place for this, but that's where we're going to put it today. Probably would make more sense to maybe have like a crosshair management script or something. I don't know. We'll add a serialized field, private image for the crosshair. And on update, we're going to update the crosshair. In that private void update crosshair, we'll check if the gun selector active gun shoot config shoot type is from gun, because that's where we really had the problem, right? Shooting from the center of the screen wasn't really an issue. The crosshair was pretty accurate. What we're going to do is just show the crosshair where the gun's currently pointing. We'll assume that some other system is going to manage actually aiming the gun, and we're just going to show the location, like your IK or your real aiming or whatever it is is going to manage that for you. So we'll define a vector three gun tip point to get the gun selector active gun get raycast origin. That's why we need that to be public. And that way we also don't have to expose the model and kind of cross pollute that the player action now knows about the model. Vector 3 forward to be the gun selector active gun get gun forward. We'll define a vector 3 hit point to be the gun tip point plus forward. And I chose an arbitrary number of times 10. And that's going to be what we use if we don't hit something with this if physics raycast gun tip point forward out raycast hit max value and the hit mask from the active gun shoot config hit mask. If that raycast hits something, then we're going to set the hit point to be the hit dot point. So the default case would be we're just choosing an arbitrary location in the forward of the gun. We're then going to convert that to screen space location with vector three screen space location equals gun selector dot camera dot world to screen point passing in the hit point. That's going to give us a location on our screen on our canvas. That's going to give us a screen space location for that particular point. Then we can check if rect transform utility dot screen point to local point in rectangle, a really long name for a function, passing in first the rect transform casted crosshair dot transform dot parent. So we're going to expect the crosshair is a root level element on the canvas. So this will give us then a screen point within the canvas somewhere. Pass in the screen space location, null for the camera, and out vector to the local position. If this returns true, that means it correctly could map that, and we can set the crosshair rect transform anchored position to this local position. If it returns false, we're just going to set it to be the center of the screen. I have this crosshair anchored at the center of the screen, that's why we're using vector 2, 0. You don't have to do it on the UI like this. You could also put a decal projector wherever this hits, and just show like a little red dot or something like that. You can see it's a little bit weird. The crosshair is kind of floating around, but it's accurate to where the gun is actually shooting. So that's really awesome. Also, as something comes in front of the crosshair, you'll see it kind of jumps into that because we're raycasting and adjusting the crosshair based on whatever we hit with the raycast. So that looks a little bit weird, but I think this is conceptually one of the really good ways that you can show where is the player going to shoot whenever we're using this method. With the caveat that you should probably only show the crosshair when the player is actually aiming, otherwise it looks just kind of ridiculous. If we flip it over to start using Using real bullets instead of hit scan shooting, we can see it works really the exact same way. And I think a lot of times you'll see in games that use this kind of shooting where the, it's all fully controlled coming out of the tip of the barrel of the gun, most of the time they just avoid this problem by not showing you a crosshair unless you're actively aiming. Maybe you pull the gun up to see iron sights and then you don't even need to show a crosshair because you're using iron sights. I hope you now understand the difference between these techniques, the pros and cons of each one, and when you might choose to use one over the other. Again, this is mostly a stylistic choice for how do you want your game to play and how you want it to feel. There's no right or wrong option here, it's totally a stylistic choice for your game. Another stylistic choice that you have is whether you're subscribed or not, and only 23% of you are, so make sure you're subscribed if you've been getting value out of these videos. And if you want to support this channel, you can go to patreon.com slash academy, get your name up here on the screen or you can just click join right here on youtube get a voice shout out starting at the awesome tier and some other cool perks too at the awesome tier there's gerald anderson autumn k matt parkin ivan rulin iffyobolus and paul berry and at the tremendous tier there's bruno bozic and at the phenomenal tier there's andrew bowen thank you all for your support i am so incredibly grateful